We have unstable bodies who are not completely being built up. They're just five giftings or yes. five callings. It's for the equipping of the, of the body. The American church, you know, the pastor kind of does all of them, right? Like, you Yes, know. he does. It's for the body to be edified and built up and function well in a healthy way so that it can then replicate itself. Because if not, then you're going to replicate bad DNA. All right, everybody, welcome to the Lebanon House of Prayer podcast. We are so excited. We have Cindy McCorkle with us all the way from where? Yeah. Are you in Ohio? Pickerington, Ohio. Pickerington, Ohio. Welcome, Cindy. How are you? Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we are excited to have you today. And I asked Cindy on today because we, uh, about, I guess it's been two months. I cannot believe it's been two months already. But we just went and did a Behold conference together, and you and I got uh, to teach in a morning comp- uh, session, and we got to talk about the fivefold. And I've yes. had a lot of people reach out to me and ask me questions, especially mm-hmm. pastors, like pastors on fivefold. And so I wanted to bring you back on because you did a teaching uh, on fivefold that Jeremiah says was the best teaching he ever heard on fivefold, which is saying something. Because Jeremiah does not say that lightly. So it was really good. And so I Thank wanted you. to talk to you about that. So tell, talk to me about fivefold, okay? Like, what, what, what are you thinking fivefold? What do you want to share? Well, it's a vast and unmined subject. Yes. <laughs> so I, I, I guess um, I would just say, just to start out, we have no template. That's good. We, we really don't know what it looks like. Yes. We, we have no good pattern to um, emulate. Yeah. That's good and that's bad. I mean, right. um, I, I always like to have a focus of where I'm going and some, some road laid out before me, but we really have very little yeah. other than what's in the book of Ephesians and some church history. Yeah. So we really don't have much. The good part of that is um, I think that it allows – us to take the concepts and not try to replicate somebody else's DNA, but really allow a church to look at what God's gifted them, how he's put them together, how he's built them up yeah. together and build it up on the godly principles that are outlined in Ephesians and then move that forward for them rather than doing cookie cutter stuff. Because in a nutshell, None of the giftings are going to be, in, in all five, none of the giftings are going to look exactly the same at any of the people in any of the settings in any of the churches. And that's, that's just like, phew. yeah. so, right. so uh, it's wet cement and we get to allow the Lord to put us in that cement and then form it. So right. that, that with that background, um, that's pretty much how I begin to look at any part of the fivefold in a ministry at a church. Oh, that's so good. Well, let me give you two things. One, yes, sir. I want to give kind of like your, I guess, resume, because um, you, you and you and Rob pastored for how long did you guys pastor that church? Twenty-one years, I think. Twenty-one years, so, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, time flies. It was 20 something. 20, 20 yeah. years. What was the name of the church? I think 21 years. Crossroads Community Church. Crossroads Community Church. So you guys we pastored. planted that. Yeah. You pastored We planted that. it. Okay. So yeah. you planted that. So that was you. We planted it. Yeah. For, and I wasn't, yeah. I mean, I wasn't in the ministry the whole time I went, you know, then to school later and, yeah. and you know, did all that stuff. So yeah. But we, we did it together. You did it together. So you guys, because uh, this is the first time I like you guys were at the church at that time. And you guys had implemented implemented the fivefold at the church, and then now mm-hmm. you are traveling. Uh, well, Rob is traveling, and I know you travel with him, and you are sharing about fivefold on the road, right? So the- whenever the whenever it's under the opportunity and the pastors ready to, for the congregation to hear it, which is a very important component. That is a huge component. We probably should say <laughs> that twice, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's a huge deal. Cause I, I'm even talking to pastors now who are trying to introduce <clears throat> fivefold to their, their people and their people are kind of like, what? I don't, you know, I don't understand. So let's go to the next thing. What is fivefold? So let why don't you just explain briefly what we're talking about? So maybe someone's jumping okay. on the podcast. They've never heard the word fivefold. What does that mean? 
Right. There's gifts that God gave to the church, yeah. gifts that the Holy Spirit gave to the church in Corinthians. God gave them in, in Romans, and then Christ gave gifts to the church mm. in Ephesians. Yes. And um, the the five components, gifts, callings, offices, they've, they've, it's been labeled bunches of different things. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. just for ease, we're just going to call it five callings or five giftings at this point, yeah. are are there for, if you go back to Ephesians, it's for the equipping of the, of the body. Yes. It, it's, it's for the equipping of the bride. Um, it's to build up that body. And in, in Ephesians 4, I think it's 4.13, let me, yeah. Um, it actually uses the word for the equipping. And that, that, that word is to, uh, the illustration I gave when, we ta- when I taught this was, it's a ship that has everything that it needs to go from the point of hitting the water to the port where it's supposed to deliver everything. And so that boat has the rowers to to move it. It has the soldiers to protect the the people who are on the boat and the cargo. It has the sailors to handle the ship. It actually has the merchandise. It has the food. It has everything that it needs to go from point A to deliver what the merchandise is to point B. And that's a picture of what the body of Christ needs to be, that when we turn our life over to Jesus, we begin to be equipped and build up so that we are able to finish the race well and to build up that body so that the body is cohesive. Because it talks about the body being joined together, the pieces and the parts, and we have to be joined and integrated in together. And so there has to be a concerted effort to bring the body in a healthy way into alignment so that it can do the work of the church, work of the Christ. And that's what the that's what the the responsibilities and really the big job description of those five working together is. And I and I love that. I love the I love the giftings. Like they're just five giftings or yes. five callings. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, so callings yes. even in a stronger word. So yes. um so what which are, by the way are never revoked. Romans no, talks true. about that. Once, yes, yeah. once they're given, they're not revoked. Mm. They cannot be utilized. They can be used by the world. They can be used in the world, which I think there is a place for that, that yeah. as believers, we can be marketplace ministers and use these same giftings out there. But it, it, they're also meant to be primarily for the building up of the church. Yeah. And so, yeah, those five each have distinct callings and responsibilities for the edification of the body. Mm. That's so good. So good. So five giftings, five callings for the edification and they're for the church and there, there is no revoking, right? Now you may not operate in it, but right. (laughs) That's right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You you still have that. Okay, good. So give me the five and let's, let's briefly describe each one. We'll try to try to describe one. The first is the apostle and they govern. Okay. They, they are, they are the, um, well, govern. Yeah, <laughs> that's, the, that's that's just that's it in a, in a nutshell. Yeah. They govern. They administrate. They they uh, move the body forward. Yeah. Uh, they 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 lay down. They lay down the rails of where that body of Christ, that bride, is moving to. Oops, moving to. Yeah. Okay. Um, then there's the prophet. Their yeah. responsibility is to help guide, to warn, to keep to keep the train on the tracks. Uh, there's a there's a cow up ahead. We need to we need to slow down here. There's a big bend we need to navigate through. Yes. You know, we need to stop and get more more fuel. Those kind of things. So they they warn and they guide. The evangelist. Their responsibility is to work with people and in, in in the community to gather the unbelievers into the church. So they gather the body. Wow. Okay. Um, to, they gather the people into the body. The teacher then grounds them. So the evangelist brings them in. The teacher grabs them and says, "Let me tell you about Jesus. Let me let me show you how to introduce him into your heart and life. Let me let me take you through those steps. To help let me help you begin to mature as a believer." And then the pastor guards the sheep. Yeah. They they take care of the needs that the body as a whole and individually takes care of. So th- those are just five overviews of what each one of those offices or giftings do. Right, and so. What's interesting in the, you know, the American church, you know, the pastor kind of does all of them, right? Like, you yes, know, he does. you know what I mean? Cause it's like, well, he's the only one who's, you know, quote unquote hired, but a lot of times he's bivocational or, or just volunteering his time. But so that's interesting. So what you're saying is there's giftings and callings that are specific to individuals who have a call on their life to be apostolic, to be evangelistic, to be shepherdly, to be teacher, to, to, to 
be prophetic or a prophet to to kind yes. of guide the body, right? It's it's too much for any one person to really have, and it's it's been it's a uh, an injustice to ask the pastor or the leader of the church, which is another whole subject. The pastor does not necessarily carry the apostolic gift, right. which is another whole set of subjects of which I'm sure we'll get to. Yes. But it's 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 inappropriate for that to be a gifting, uh, uh, not a gifting, a uh, responsibility that you place on one person because they're not more than likely gifted by God to carry all five. Yes. The, the apostle tends to carry a bit of all of that DNA, yeah. but the other ones are much more specific. Right. And and when we, we say that, because that, you know, an apostle, if we think of the apostle Paul, he went into an area, right? Yes. Bro- yes. Brokered the area. And then guess, yes. guess who is the evangelist, the teacher, the, you know what I mean? But he, yes. you're the one who kind of, it's kind of like the church plant, right? Like you do everything at right. start, right? Like you guys it's did everything. It's the pioneer. Yeah. They pioneer it. They pioneer it. They, uh, I use the illustration, they load up the wagon with the beans and the bacon and they, they take <laughs> off because, because they, they, they forge that. They make a way where there's not been a way. And so they have to operate a bit in all of those. But you can only do that so long. Right. Um, you really can only do that so long. And that's because that's interesting because I think an apostolic leader, right, is created mm-hmm. to like load up the wagon. And then like when they get to a certain point, it's like they hit this moment where they're like, okay, like we need to do something new or different, I guess. Well, the wagon's not going to work anymore. Now we need a house. So now you yeah, have to someone to build the house. You need good. someone to dig the well. You need someone to help yeah. you get a plow there to plow up the dirt so you can put seed in for next year's harvest. Um, it, it requires more than one person just to make that happen and 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 to flourish in a healthy way, right. which is the whole outline of what Ephesians is. It's for the body to be edified and built up and function well in a healthy way so that it can then replicate itself. Because if not, then you're going to replicate bad DNA. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. That is so good. And, uh, and so one of the things that you and I have, t- we've talked about, or I guess people have asked me is like, okay, you know, like these pastors come, you know, and we either have pastor, teacher, we even have evangelists and, you know, the church of Nazarene, but they come mm-hmm. And they like, okay, I fit into these molds, but what does it look like to be apostolic or to be prophetic or to be, you know, evangelist or shepherd or teacher? And I know we have, you know, we've, we've, we've taken like a pest test and there's different tests out Mm -hmm. there, but I always tell people like, ask the people around you, like who you are, like what's, what's your, like, what's your DNA, right? Like, cause the people around you know you the best, right? Well, first of all, let's start with asking the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's good. I mean, you know, I, I go back to Psalm 139, 16. God formed you in your mama's womb, and he yes. strategically chose things that he put in you, whether you've realized them or not, yeah. that he knew needed to be present in your life for the assignments that he had for you. Yeah, that's um, so that's the first, that's, yeah. I, I mean, not to you pull the Bible card, but it is really, it's, right. that's, <laughs> yeah. that's the first place. No, ask good. him, ask him. Yeah. Um, when you're searching and because he's, he's the, he's the test. Yeah. Then the second thing is, I, I agree. I, you, you start to then assess where the fruit is in your life. Let, mm. let me just use this example. I can't sing. I don't even hum very well. And my five-year-old granddaughter can whistle me. Mm-hmm. Music ministry with a worship voice is not on my radar. <laughs> right. So for me to say, Ooh, ooh pick me to do the Sunday morning, you know, yeah. the, the, the solo. Not a good thing. I, I I have enough self-awareness to realize that's not my gifting. So I, I'm able to step back and not feel bad about that, but go, okay, where is there fruit in my life? What is it yes. that God puts before me that when I apply his presence and his Holy Spirit in and through me, is there fruit that, mm-hmm. it, that comes forth? And I think that's the first thing we need to start to look at that, even past the tests. Yeah. Because let's let's be honest, we can we can make the tests, we can skew them the way we want. Yes, that's the problem. <laughs> look. Yes, that is it the is. problem with yeah. those. I want to be this, and so yes, you choose that. So, so yeah. So let's look at the fruit in my life. Because yeah. the fruit, if it's good fruit, it it won't lie. Yeah. 
if That's it's good. if it's That's immature really fruit or, or or bad fruit or rotten fruit, it's going to show too. So where's yes. the fruit in my life? And then the next thing is there should be body confirmation, mm. and and so that is part of this whole five fivefold part. There has to be a confirmation of the body. No one is a self appointed prophet. No one is a self-appointed apostle. No one is a self-appointed evangelist. And if they are, I have this quote that I wrote down that I wanted to read. Give me a second. Yeah, absolutely. It's by Floyd McClung. It says, if a person wants authority or mm. let's say an office yeah. or a title, don't give it to him. Mm. I want, ooh, if he wants responsibility, then give him the responsibility and the authority. Mm. That's good. And that's really a powerful thought because if I if I say, Oh, I'm this, I want I want the authority. Yeah. But first of all, I might not have the ability to carry that out. There right. need there needs to be body confirmation. And then in addition to all of that, one of the things that I think um that that has to be dealt with 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 these five callings because the replication of what happens needs to be such good quality fruit is that there has to be not only the calling, but the character that goes with it. Yes. The calling and the gifts can, can be sparkly and shiny. And, and if there's not the character underneath, it's going to crash and burn. And so is the organization. Mm. And so I think that that is really, that's really critical. Um, that the character has to be there. Wow. Um, it, it, I, I believe I was at, at uh, El Hop at once, and I, I shared the the statement that um, character is the uh, character is the donkey that carries in the anointing. Yeah, that's so good. Donkeys do hard work. Yeah, they do the hard, boring, mm. uh, back breaking work, mm -hmm. but. It's what they carry in. What did the donkey carry in on on Palm Sunday? Yeah, the Son of God. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so I think that 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 hard work, that that character, that discipline from the inside out, where uh, you know, like Stephen, he was a man full of faith. He had spent time with Jesus. He had the heart of a servant. Those are all components of character that that had to be present for him to be identified to even do the ministry that Stephen was called to to, to right. do. Right. That's it had to be there. It had to be there. Um, and if we don't, it's it's gonna it's it's gonna it's going to fall. It's going to be hollow. It's going to be hollow. And so with that, in any of these five, apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, all of those five have to be willing to submit themselves yeah. to, to, uh, to mentorship yeah. and, and discipleship. And, yeah. and uh, I don't want to use the word I'm trying to, I don't know, molding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where, right. where the character flaws are revealed. Yeah. We all have them. We sure. all have blind spots, yes. so we have to we have to have that we have to have a body that is able to help us uh, do that, and and we can't pull our little righteous robes and pull the Jesus card out. And I'm the, I'm, I'm called to do this, and so I'm, I'm above your yeah you know, can't can't do that. Wow, yeah, that's so have true. to stay humble. Yes. Have to stay humble. If these five aren't humble, mm -hmm. then all the works of the flesh that go in in the rest of that chapter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, will be manifested in the church. It, that'll be the fruit that'll come out if these oh, wow. five do not work from that place of humility. In my humble opinion, right? In my opinion, yeah. And that is that's such a good thing. I mean, Brooke and I were driving down the road the other day, and she said this, and I thought it was I thought this was so good. She said that, you know, I, I'm beginning to discover this is who I am, and I think everybody should be like who I am, but I'm realizing not everybody is like who I am, and it's okay. So mm -hmm. like, I'm okay with myself, but I'm also okay with you not being like me. Right. Because I know, I know what I, what I bring, but yes. in humility, I recognize you're not like me. So I'm going to, I'm going to honor you and I'm going to listen to That's you it. and I'm going to be like, okay, you think different than I think. Now I'm going to bring my yes. piece, you know, but I'm going to allow you to think differently. Now here's a, here's a, Here's an interesting question. So in the fivefold, you got your apostle, you know, you got prophet, evangelist, shepherd, teacher, right? And the and the goal mm -hmm. really is to have in a community, um, you know, someone operating in those giftings, you know, 
one person, not one person, one person in each gifting really is the ideal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> do you have any type of conflict in the fivefold? Like what, do you have any type of tension? Um, what, what, what do you, what do you think about that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, next short, question. Yeah, that's the short <laughs> answer, isn't it? Yes. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, if we don't, as you just said, what Brooke said, honor and respect the calling and the giftings that the other ones carry, then you're going to elevate yourself above that. Yes. It, it, and, and that's not a picture of a body being built up. That's a body being hacked off at you know, right. a leg of the chair being hacked off. Well, it's going to be unstable. And, and let me go back to, that's what we see in the body of Christ. Now we have a pastor and we have a teacher, maybe yeah. an evangelist. We don't have the other two. And so we have unstable bodies who are not completely being built up. And until that's there and all mm -hmm. five are being honored and uh, doing their job, then we're always going to be off centered. And I think that's, that's a picture of the that's church good. that we see now. Yeah. And then some of that is that I think probably that maturity and character you're talking about learning to be like, yeah. Hey, I have maturity to be like, Hey, I honor this person, even though I don't see like them. And at times right. it, it feels opposite, you know, like for a, yeah. for a shepherd who guards versus an evangelist who goes and grabs anybody, you know? So it's like, yeah. you got these two are like, ah, you know, but if you honor one another, you're like, hey, listen, I understand who you are. You understand who I am. And we're both going to bring gifts together. Which right. Is and the, and the, the evangelist is going to bring the person in and ultimately need the pastor to take care of their needs and the teacher to raise them up because their job's not to stand there and hold their hand now. That's right. Their job is to go back out and find another lost sheep to bring yes. in and do that again. Yes. So, so if, if, if you don't, if you can't trust, if you don't honor the gifting that the other person has, then you're not going to hand this this soul yeah. to the other person yeah. and entrust it to them. That's so good. Um, and that's really what a picture of it is. If, if, if all five are doing what they need to be doing, then with the apostle and the prophet, we know where we're going and we're bringing the people in through the evangelist, handing them to the pastor to help mend and heal and bring together and then to the teacher to help raise them up so that they can go out and replicate themselves again. Yeah. So it, it requires that synergy and that trust within between the five. Yeah, um, and good. that does take humility because, you know, we all want to think we're that in a bag of chips and can do it all and we can't. <laughs> and we shouldn't. <laughs> we, we shouldn't. shouldn't. We, we should, shouldn't. We should be resting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is so good. We shouldn't. We shouldn't. And that, that would be a whole nother podcast probably right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. thank you, Cindy. Our time is up. But okay. do you have any other resources? I know you studied Ephesians chapter four, but do you have any other like, hey, this is an excellent book about, you know, a learning more Golly, about this? Golly, please hold. Yes, I'm holding. Yeah. The, and golly, there's so much more on this. Uh, and you, you had mentioned about, can it go in the marketplace? Absolutely. That's another whole, that's another whole discussion that we could yes. talk about how those five actually uh, operate in the, in the, um, the marketplace. Marketplace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, my favorite book in the whole process is the fivefold ministry made practical by Ron Meyer. Mm, okay. Um, he's a farmer. I think yeah. that's why I like him. He's just a plain old simple guy. He doesn't make it super hard. He doesn't he doesn't make it all fancy. It's that's just good. like, look, this is what we need to do. And I just I really like that. Alignment by Mark Pfeiffer is another one. Oh, um okay. uh, The Permanent Solution by Alan Hirsch and Tim Ketchum. Yes. And um Apostles in the Emerging Apostolic Movement by David Canis Tracy. Those are the five or one, two, three, four, four. Sorry, I can't count. Fivefold. I guess you need another book, don't yes. I? Um Bible. But there you go. yeah, there you go. There are Ephesians. Yes. Um those are those are just uh excellent resources. Yeah. But start out with the Ron Meyer book. He just makes it that's so good. So user friendly. User friendly. Mm. So well, and I'll give you one more resource. Uh, Cindy's sermon from the Behold oh. Conference. You should go back and watch that. You can download the app. We'll put the link in the in the podcast, or you can go into our podcast and go and watch the Behold special. And you should watch that 
Um, I think it was Friday. Did we preach Friday? I think we taught Friday together. I Friday, think so, yeah. yeah Friday yeah. morning. Yeah. You're going to want to watch that. So, all right. Well, thank you, Cindy. Will you pray us out? Sure, sure. Father, um, first of all, we thank you that yeah. you're, you're, you've given us gifts, Father, that yeah. your spirit has given us gifts and that your son has given us gifts. You know exactly what we need yes. for this time in history, Father, so that this church is a bride without spot or wrinkle. Um, Father, that's what we really want to attain and, and that's what we want to emulate yeah. and that's what we want to replicate. Yes. So, Father, I pray, God, that as a uh, People hear this this podcast that Father, you begin to birth in them the DNA for their church, for all of the gifts to be manifested and utilized for the and for just the the beautification of the bride. And Father, I pray that most of all, as as you raise us up, Father, that we are uh, we're garbed, we are cloaked, we are covered yes. with a spirit of humility yes. that um, we truly do honor. First of all, you. Uh, those that you entrust us, and those who we have gifts and we we work with, Father. Um, but God, we, we just thank you. Thank you for your love and your yes. mercy and how you lead us as we submit to you. So, Father, um, I'm excited for the days ahead and for how you're going to raise up a generation who walks out these callings. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. All right, everybody, thanks for jumping on the uh, L-Pop podcast, and we'll see you soon.